Now, a lot of people in Washington think the Keystone Pipeline deal is a done deal at this point because the Republicans won uh, and they now have the Senate and the House. They're going to pass legislation. They can't get past the presidential veto, but people aren't sure that Obama is going to veto it. And uh, there's a lot of people who believe that President Obama's kind of want to do the Keystone Pipeline all along anyway. I'm among those people. Let's just be fair about that. Now, I don't think they should do the Keystone Pipeline, uh, but I'm afraid they're going to. Well, there are some people who do not agree to that. One of them happens to be Cyril Scott. He is the president of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe, member of the Sioux Nation. Okay, And he says that if they try to put the Keystone XL pipeline coming in from Canada, going down to Texas, through tribal land, that it would be, quote, an act of war. Damn. We're going to war again. Okay. So I like that. That's strong, strong words. Now, Huffington Post explains, he also contended the House vote violates the 1851 and 1868 Fort Laramie treaties, which gave the Black Hills to the Sioux Nation. So saying, hey, listen, I don't know if you know this, but that's our land, and you're not going to put that pipeline through our land. I'm going to tell you in a second why he doesn't want it, but more strong language from Cyril Scott. So the House has now signed our death warrants and the death warrants of our children and grandchildren. The Rosebud Sioux Tribe will not allow this pipeline through our lands. And then he went on to say, we will close our reservation borders to Keystone XL. Damn. Now, why is he doing that? Uh, you know, it comes across his land. Now, there's an issue of water. There's a huge water reservoir there. It's one of the few things that are left pure in that land. They don't want that ruined. Uh, and it's also, of course, an issue of sovereignty. We'll come back to in a second. But the predominant reason is because he believes that Native Americans are stewards of the earth. That is part of their culture. In fact, here's an explanation. The Lakota people have always been stewards of this land. We feel it is imperative that we provide safe and responsible alternative energy resources, not only to tribal members, but to non-tribal members as well. We need to stop focusing and investing in risky fossil fuel projects like TransCanada's Keystone XL pipeline. We need to start remembering that the earth is our mother and stop polluting her and start taking steps to preserve the land, water, and our grandchildren's future. See, now that's wonderful because that's a person who's acting on principle. Now there are, in different cultures, positive parts of the culture, negative parts of the culture. This is obviously a very positive part of uh, Native American culture and he is enforcing it and uh, in a way that winds up, as he stated there, not helping just his people, but everybody on earth. Rare act of principle, love it. Now if he's gonna have to go to war to do it, he says he's willing to do it. My guess is it'll be more of a legal war than the old school style, so Custer can relax. Um, and then he pointed out to everybody something that a lot of people don't realize. He said, we are a sovereign nation and we are not being treated as such. Well, that's a good point. So uh, reporters wanted to go back and talk to George Bush, former President Bush, and ask him, hey, what, what exactly does that mean when he says that? So then this happened. What do you think tribal sovereignty means in the, tri in the 21st century? And how do we resolve conflicts between tribes and the federal and state governments? Yeah. Uh, tribal sovereignty means that, it's sovereign. It means you're a, you're a, you've been given sovereignty and you're viewed as a sovereign entity. Okay. And therefore, the relationship between the federal government and tribes is one between sovereign entities. Well, that ought to resolve it. <laughs> it's a wonderful old clip from George W. Bush, a man who had no idea what he was doing. All right, in this case, Cyril Scott does know what sovereignty means, and he does know that he is a sovereign nation and that they need to get his permission before going through his land. And apparently, they have not gotten that, and he's not willing to give it. So, looks like there might need to be a change of plans in that pipeline. We'll see how they deal with it. I mean, if history is any guide, they will, of course, roll over Sioux Nation and completely ignore their demands and probably do what they want to do just to make money anyway. Let's hope that history is not a guide, that it warns us not to repeat the mistakes we've made in the past.